कबीरा बादल प्रेम का हम पर बरसया हाई आए 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 अंतर भीगी आत्मा अंतर भीगी आत्मा हरी भाई बन रहा है हरी भाई बन रहा है सेस कबीर लव क्लाउड्स हैव गैदर्ड इट इज रेनिंग डाउन ऑन मी माय एंटायर सोल इज सोक्ड इन इट ऑल राउंड देयर इज ग्रीनरी द क्वेश्चन गोज एज फॉलोस डियर आचार्य जी प्रणाम इज द ग्रीनरी mentioned in the above doha something beyond peace i feel as if every cell of kabir ji was pulsating with the divine love when he says love clouds have gathered raining down on me could you please elaborate what is he pointing to deep gratitude and love all of you just just sing what kabir sahab is saying just sing i may keep trying for 2 hours i will just not be able to go beyond kabir sahab what he has said in these two lines i won't be able to say in 2 hours so do not try to understand him through me understand him through him just think it's anyway so lucid and self explanatory is it not kabir badal prem ka hum par barsa aaye antar bhigi atma hari bhai ban raha hai without love there is merely dryness without love there is merely logic anybody from computer engineering background here machines work on logic especially computing machines and the thing with man is that at least half part of his brain works on logic thankfully only half <laughs> without love there is just logic and it's extremely dry the two hemisphere of hemispheres of man's brain are a good pointer of course nature didn't deliberately evolve them so that they may suit my example this night but still they lend themselves very beautifully to point at a great revelation man cannot live by logic alone man cannot live by arguments alone in fact not only are both important if one of the two has to be chosen it would be the one that is the more fundamental of the two and of the two love is more fundamental why is love more fundamental because when you say that there is the earning of the mind for the truth called love and then there is the resistance to it which is just the bodily tendencies called vritti and prakriti then you have to remember that not only is the earning of the mind towards love love even the resistance of prakriti to love is love 
please get this. Now that sounds paradoxical. We are saying that we are usually split in two. One part that unreasonably wants to merge into something greater, wants to relax into sleep. And then there is the other logical part that wants continuation, that wants security. What I'm saying is the unreasonable part is surely pulsating with love. But even the reasonable part, even the logical part is driven by nothing but love though indirect. Even when you resist love, it is because of love, just the resisting love is misguided. Love is more fundamental. Are you kidding? You rush towards dissolution. There are moments in your life. There are special incidents when you just want to sacrifice everything for something holy, something very lovely, something very precious. And then there is the usual instinct of self-preservation, right? The instinct towards self-preservation says, hold on. Don't die, don't dissolve, don't give up, don't surrender. Just continue. You must ask, why does even the instinct for self-preservation exist? Why do you want to continue? You want to continue in time so that at the end of time you might meet your beloved. There is that within you which says I want to jump out of the stream of time right now. I want that the inner clock stops right now. And then there is that in you which is very logical which says be a little considerate. Use the intellect. Create a better future. Tomorrow you will get that which you so desperately want. So even the logical part is looking for nothing but the same thing that the so-called illogical part is wanting. Both want the same thing. One wants it right now, the other wants it in the future. So obviously both are driven by love. One is driven by crazy love. The other is driven by love tempered with, mollified by logic. Our life is nothing but an interplay of these two instincts. These two instincts have sometimes been called as yin and yang, sometimes Purush and Prakriti, sometimes Apollonian and Dionysian. But these two, hmm, thesis, antithesis, they keep shaping our life. Are you getting it? Kabir Badal Prem ka hum par barsai. Antar bhigi atma, hari bhai banarai. There was such dryness. And now, sap is running through the veins of trees. There is greenery. Something within has just been showered with ambrosia. I see 
a juicy fruit appearing. I see blood running now through the veins. Are you getting it? Kabir Sahab is first and foremost a poet of love. But that's such a stupid thing to say. Because you cannot be a poet of understanding. All poetry is just love. And therefore, all great saints have been poets irrespective of whether they wrote in prose or verse. You don't make it happen. It rains upon you. You cannot compel or guide or instruct a cloud. To bless you with showers. Or can you? All that you can do is not run indoors when it rains. Kabir Badal Prem ka hum par barsai. Do hear what Kabir Sahab is lovingly silent about. When the cloud comes, he remains available to be drenched in the rain. Otherwise, we all have umbrellas. Hmm? And as technology evolves, we'll have even better means to avoid getting wet. I didn't cause the cloud to come. It just happened with me. Who is the one who is doing this to me? What does he want? Or does he even want anything? Maybe he's just responding to my want. It rained upon me and the entire world appears green now. What's going on? Did Kabir Sahib say that the cloud of love <coughs> rained upon the entire world? Kabir Badal Prem Ka Ham par barsa aai. Huh? Or did he say jag par barsa aai? Huh? Where did it rain? It rained upon him. It's strange. And what has turned green? The world has turned green. It's raining here. And the greenery is sprouting there. What nonsense. Oh, just love. You know? Nonsense is unnecessarily too long a word. Eight characters. Cut that by half. Instead of saying nonsense, say love. Four units are sufficient. And in Kabir's language, it is not even four, it is dhai. <laughs> hmm?
something has happened to you and the world has changed something has happened to you and the world has changed now that you are in love you cannot look at the world in the same way as you used to look at it this again contains a lot of revelations in its own simple understated way usually our love is about one special thing or person so even if you say that you see greenery somewhere that greenery is commonly just a man or woman in green hmm so you are in love and she is your haryali that's how you colloquially put it in hindi don't you but kabir sahab is saying hari bhai ban rai the entire jungle has turned green i see greenery not merely in one tree but in the entire that's the difference between common love and kabir's love in your love there is just one green tree in kabir's love the entire world has turned green there is nothing dry anywhere anymore what does that mean love is a great great pain listen to this carefully love is a great pain it is not without reason that kabir sahab is saying that kabir badal prem ka hum par barsa hai you know why he is using the trope of cloud and water and rain because love burns love hurts love is nothing but the realization of separation in kabir's love because you become very very sensitive to your own yearning for the truth you also start seeing how everything in the universe is desperately wanting just that same beloved as you are you hardly see a difference between yourself and others listen carefully what is the difference between you and you what is the difference between you and you how do you say we are different if the two of you have exactly the same identical desires would you still say we two are different difference implies difference in desires 
and the difference in desires is so easily visible. It is right there to see, undeniable. You want something that he does not want. And he wants something that only he wants. He wants to go back to a particular house that is only his. You will get up and look for a pair of slippers that belong only to you. When you want to drink water, you want to drink it for yourself, don't you? You are thirsty. Water is your particular personal desire. Love is when you start seeing the deep desire beneath all your superficial desires. Love is when you start seeing what you are really, really thirsty for. Superficially, the desires of different people are different. Deeply, we all share one desire. So, what is it that happens in love? In love, two things are happening simultaneously. One, you have come in contact with your deep self that wants union with the beloved. Secondly, you have seen that this is what all want. There is nobody who does not want deeply the same thing as I do. Superficially, he wants black and he wants white. Deeply, both of them want only satisfaction. Now the world is not full of strangers. When there are just strangers, there is dryness or is there not? If you are with a group of strangers, is it a very juicy situation? But when, with, but when you are with people, you call as your own, then juice flows freely or does it not? Huh? A college reunion and beer flows freely. I am with people who are my own. Getting it? The true lover starts seeing that everybody is exactly like himself. So not only are all these people my own, they are me. Not only are they not strangers, they are not even my own. They are identical with me. And if they are identical with me, how can there be any dryness? You are not only my brother, you are me. me. Forget about being a stranger, you are not even my brother. You are not even my mirror image, you are me. Those eyes are searching for just the same thing as these eyes. There is nothing else that anybody's eyes are looking for. It doesn't matter what the object of our perception is. We are searching for the same thing. Now are you with aliens? Now are you with foreigners? You are not even with family, you are with yourself. That's love. So I said love means two things. Love firstly means total dedication towards the beloved. And secondly, total identification with the world. But First of all, you need total disidentification with the world. Because unless, 
because unless you are totally disidentified with the world how will you identify with him and that is why you know why saints have so much compassion for the world now can you relate these two things saints have great love for him saints have great love for him and saints principal concern is with the truth what is a saint principally concerned with the world or the truth truth but at the same time we have seen saints lay down their lives for the sake of the world we are into christmas now if jesus is the son of god and jesus loves god much more than anything or anybody else what is jesus doing among men and women of this world what is the primary concern of jesus the good will of the people ah the love of god that's what he principally wants right does jesus say i am the son of this world he says no even my mortal mother is a virgin how can i be a son of this world i belong to my father and if jesus belongs to his father why is he so laboriously why is he so painstakingly working for the people of this world that's the thing about love these are the twin features of love because you love him so much therefore you also see that all love him equally it's just that they are a bit deluded in spite of loving him so much they do not know how deeply they love him so their love becomes misdirected it's a stream that should be flowing towards the ocean and instead it starts getting lost in sands and quagmires and various places and therefore the saint works tirelessly for the world because he knows that you are me so therefore by working for you i am actually working for me myself ha huh? antarbhigi atma hari bhai ban raha hai ha ah. me me everywhere i am with my own people it feels great and therefore it also implies that i cannot go to him alone because if you are me how can i go there alone i'll have to take you along and now that explains why a saint keeps singing for the world all his life because he knows fully well that he cannot go there alone he is me and he is me and he is me how will i take the flight alone